Hi, I'm Casey. I'm a professor and one of my favorite things to do is give advice to graduate students on YouTube. <laughs> this video is about proposals. Dissertation proposals especially, much of this probably also applies to thesis proposals. Over the past couple of months I was on four dissertation proposal committees in my department and so this is really fresh on my mind. <laughs> and while recognizing that norms around what a proposal is is super different in different disciplines and even different programs and departments. I thought I could give some quick general tips on proposal writing and presenting. If you haven't seen my video on PhD milestones and sort of how a PhD works, you might want to go check that out because one of the important things there is sort of where a proposal fits into the process. So most typically there is some kind of exam before this point, qualifying exam, preliminary exam, etc. Those are intended as a sort of you are prepared to go on and do your PhD research. And the end of a PhD is a dissertation defense where you say, here is what I did. Now give me a PhD. <laughs> so the proposal is when you say what you're going to do. And then a committee of really smart people help you focus and frame and scope. And then when they approve your proposal, that means go do this. When you're done, we'll give you a PhD at the end. <laughs> a proposal can be a particularly nerve wracking part of the PhD process because sometimes it can be your first sort of judgment as an independent researcher. Now at this point, it's entirely possible that as a PhD student, you've already done research projects and even authored papers, but a dissertation still feels like that thing that is really yours. And so the idea that people are going to be judging you is really scary. So I want to give you some thoughts for how you might approach this. So the first thing is you have an advisor or a supervisor, a PI. Depending on your discipline, you might be working extremely closely with, or it might be a bit more hands off, but they're still the person who's supposed to be helping shepherd you through this process. So I would really encourage you to be talking to them and getting feedback along the way. Hopefully an advisor wouldn't let you get this far, propose until you're ready. And so if they tell you it's gonna be fine, one thing you can do is listen to them. <laughs> now this video isn't about deciding what your dissertation project will be. I think that would have to be a whole other thing. <laughs> so you should already have a topic in mind, but when you're writing your proposal, one of the things that you really want to keep in mind is scope. Is this something that can be completed in the time that you have left in your PhD? It is so common for PhD students to propose something that is way too big. One of my colleagues told me that during his proposal, his committee said, congratulations, you've just proposed an entire career's worth of work. <laughs> In my experience being on committees and even just seeing PhD students do proposals, the most common scoping related critique I see is, take something out. It's too much. On the one hand, it's easier to take things out than to add things in for potentially. But when you're trying to scope, think, can I actually do this in X number of years? <laughs> and one of the things that you should do as part of your proposal is create a timeline to help you figure that out. The other thing that you'll have to do before your proposal is create a committee. Now how committees are constituted are super different in different programs. Most typically it is some combination of faculty in your department and outside that department or even outside the university. And then your advisor will be the chair of the committee. Lots of things you can take into account when choosing committee members. Maybe that's a whole other video, but definitely something that you should be talking to your advisor about. If I had to give you one piece of advice, it's to choose people who will actually be able to help you make the project better. And when you have a committee, you should get their input. You don't want to blindside them with the project when it's all completely written and done and you've decided what you're going to do. If you can, you should get their thoughts while it's still forming in your head. 
<laughs> so make use of your committee. They're not just there to judge you. They are there to help you. Seriously. Now, what a proposal document looks like is going to be super different in different programs. I've seen 100 page ones. I've seen 20 page ones. Get examples and get feedback, which means that you want to start writing sooner than you probably think you do. The pieces of a proposal, again, might be slightly different depending on the norms of your program, but it tends to be a significant background related work. You need to show that you know what's already been done in the space. It's sometimes but not always might be some initial work that you've already done. And then perhaps a bulk of it is a proposal for the work that you are going to do. For example, my dissertation proposal, I believe was four chapters, an introduction, a background lit review section, one chapter about a study that I had already done and how it motivates the rest of the work, and then a chapter proposing three additional studies that I was going to do to complete the overarching narrative of this project. I have a copy of my finished dissertation on my website, a ton of overlap between my proposal and my finished dissertation, because for example, the background in lit review doesn't change. I mean, you know, a little bit, but depending on sort of what's normal in your program, your proposal might end up being a big chunk of your finished dissertation. Often a proposal is quite methods heavy because that's something that's really useful to get feedback on. Okay, so now you have written your proposal. Yay, and hopefully you've gotten feedback at least from your advisor slash committee chair slash PI supervisor, whatever they're called in your program. And hopefully they've been helping you and you're iterating on it and getting feedback from other students in your program. Those are all great things to do. Remember, and I'll just keep reiterating this, you are not alone in this. You have lots of people who should be helping you. Now, I'm imagining that specific programs have explicit norms for this kind of thing. So I'm not going to give you a length of time, but typically you send your written proposal to your committee with a reasonable amount of time for them to read it before your proposal presentation. I will tell you that in my department, the norm is two weeks. This is what I make my advisees do. They send their proposal to their committee no later than two weeks before the deadline. This is so they have time to read it and think about it and prepare questions for you and feedback. And hopefully you've already had conversations with your committee members before this about what you're doing to sort of get their thoughts as you are forming that document and deciding what you were going to do. And then you wait and you try to relax and you prepare your presentation. Now, I don't know that presentations for proposals are something that is done in every program, but it's pretty typical. And it tends to look very similar to a dissertation defense. A presentation, maybe 30 or 40 minutes, again, different norms. Sometimes these presentations are just for your committee. Sometimes they are open to other students in your program or even the public. In my program, sometimes people would invite family members to their proposals. You should just find out what's typical in your program. And in fact, if you can, you should attend proposals from other students before your own. So, you know, as you're in the first couple of years of your PhD, more senior students are going to be proposing and defending their dissertation and going through all these milestones. If those are things that are open to you, you should absolutely attend so that you have a sense of what to expect. Tips on how to do a presentation of this kind of thing are similar to how you might do any presentation. And I'm wary of being too specific because, again, this is going to be really different depending on the norms of your discipline and your program. I'm just going to keep saying that over and over. Find out what the norms are. <laughs> but that really is my advice. Me telling you how it works in my department is going to be helpful for the 30 PhD students in my department. And if any of you are watching this, you can just ask me. <laughs> but one piece of advice that I can give you that will always be true no matter who you are and no matter what the presentation is, practice it. 
and ideally practice it in front of other people to get feedback. And other students in your program are great people for that. It's also very possible that your advisor or committee chair will let you practice it for them before it's in front of the entire committee. And on your presentation day, it is very likely that after you do your presentation, your committee members will ask you questions. Depending on the culture, these may be more or less uh, acrimonious, <laughs> I guess. I have been in places in which the culture is quite kind in this sense. Questions tend to be more about clarification than grilling or catching you in something. But that kind of thing might be different in different places. But again, that's something that you can get a sense for from seeing other people's proposals and also talking to your advisor about the kinds of questions that people might ask. Methodological clarifications are quite common, for example, or did you consider how this particular piece of literature fits in here? Questions about contributions or research questions, how it all fits together, etc. But here is the number one thing that I want to tell you about doing a dissertation proposal. You should try to approach this as an opportunity rather than an obstacle. Let me say that again. This does not have to be a hurdle that you are jumping over. It is an amazing opportunity for you to get help on your project. How many times in your career do you have a bunch of smart people in a room listening to you talk about your research with the sole goal of helping you make it better? I really encourage you to think of your committee as people who are there to help you, not gatekeep you. You might think of a proposal as a kind of contract. You say, I am going to do X, Y, and Z. And when they pass your proposal, your committee is saying, if you do X, Y, and Z well enough, we will give you a PhD when you are done. So one of the things that this process is, is a kind of negotiation about what X, Y, and Z is. So again, things your committee might do, they might ask you for clarifications to make sure they know what X, Y, and Z are. They might tell you that X and Y is gonna take you three years to do, so don't bother with Z and you don't need Z. They might tell you, oh, actually you should do W instead of Y. And then at the end, you know what you're going to do. You have a roadmap to your dissertation. It is also very common for students to have to do revisions to their proposal document. So if you're in that position, if you get a sort of conditional pass pending revisions, or even a technical failure pending revisions, know that the intention is for that to become a pass once you have negotiated with your committee what X, Y, and Z will be. And then you know, so you can go off and do it. And they've almost certainly given you excellent suggestions that you can use to go off and do the best dissertation that you can possibly do. And being past your proposal is an incredibly exciting point in a PhD career. And if this is the terminology that your program uses, this is often when you go from being a PhD student to a PhD candidate, which is kind of cool. Often you're done with classes at that point, and so you become ABD, which means all but dissertation. And I have to say, one of the best parts of a PhD career is the last year or two when mostly what you're doing is your dissertation. Honestly, at that point, you should also try to limit side projects and focus in a bit. It can be both great to focus and feel a little bit stifling, but the amazing thing is that once you're done with your dissertation, once you've defended it and you're moving on to the next stage of your career, you get to move out of dissertation tunnel vision and the world is your oyster. So all of the ideas that you're having <laughs> for projects that you want to do, file them away and do them after you're done with your dissertation. 
All right, I hope that was helpful as some sort of quick tips for how to approach a dissertation proposal. If you have more specific questions, feel free to ask them in the comments. I may not know the answer because it might be specific to your program, but I'm happy to try to help if I can. If you're a graduate student and you're not already subscribed to my channel, maybe do that because I've got a lot more coming for you. <laughs> and if you are on the road to your dissertation proposal, good luck. I for one can't wait to see what exciting new knowledge you are going to add to the world. And I'm Casey. Thanks for watching.